So these few classes are only talking about <coughs> the wave spectra. So previously I told you how to calculate the <coughs> pressure from the waves, the hydrodynamic pressure. So another important aspect of our ocean engineering is the wave spectra. So last class I also discussed about how to get we started how to get the spectrum from the surface elevation. Now the spectra is important from the point of view of calculations of spectra you have to get what is called the C state. So this actually describes your <coughs> amplitude and frequency. Now, unless you get this, you will not be able to calculate what is called the response. What is going to be your response of ships and floating offshore structures? So you have to know this, how the behavior of ships and floating offshore structures are going to behave in waves. So response, basically the spectra is required to calculate response of ships and floating offshore structures to waves. Now this we are discussing the wave spectra. Now, later on when we finish with this, <coughs> then we have to calculate what is called the, from the response here to obtain what is called the response spectra. Now, this I will tell you how to get this, but uh, after not today, in a subsequent class. So, this is where we are going. So, this response spectra you have to find out from what is called the wave spectra. So wave spectra, previous class I told you, this we, you, you have to get from the wave records. So wave spectra basically obtained from wave records. Or wave records you write from wave records of sea surface elevation. Sea surface surface elevations are recorded for a period of time. So this time period can be usually for a one record this lasts from say 15, 15 to 20 minutes. This is duration of one record. So this uh, our main object uh, is to get this response spectra for different C states and this is obtained via a certain function from you write from what is called a transfer function. So in vibrations also we will come across this word what is called a transfer function. Anyway, so this will come later, but uh, the our now the problem is to have this wave spectra. So this normally duration is 15 to 20 minutes uh, time record. Now this you have to obtain at a particular place or write at a particular location. Particular location from wave boys.
Now, last class I told you that you can write the surface elevation as a Fourier series, say sigma i equal to 1 to n. So, this n is the number of frequencies and a i cos 2 pi, this is what we have written. Now, here there is a small change, you simply put one underscore and a i and alpha i. So, this the underscore actually says that they are random values. Now, in uh, today's class we will see how to get the surface elevation from these random values. Now, if you want to get this you have to do a little bit of statistics and you have to take help or construct what is called a probability density function. Now, uh, in your wave analysis actually you will be dealing with what is called random processes. Your wave, the wave records that you are getting those are actually random processes. And of course, in your vibration class this comes under random vibration. So, there are certain parameters for this. So, this is actually a random process and random process first you can analyze from a what is called a probability density function you have to construct for what? For this amplitude a i and alpha i. So, these probability density functions we have to see. Now, the wave record how you are going to build up or the surface elevation. So, I told you, so this is actually your Fourier series. Okay. Now, your Fourier series are going to have number of frequencies and various with various amplitudes and phases. So, you write these are many harmonic components. So, if you break this Fourier series into harmonic components, you will get the number of frequencies. So, the first one you can get, now remember the amplitude of these harmonics are not the same. So, this is called the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency. So, so this can also be a second harmonic you will get like this. So, like this there will be number of harmonics you will get with different frequencies. So, that means you have split up your surface elevation into sum of all these elevations. So, you will get something like this you keep on doing this, but uh, the problem with this is that you are getting the surface elevation from discrete number of frequencies. You are getting some discrete, what you have done is getting some discrete values, is not it? So, this is many harmonic components. So, you write this conforms to say frequency f 1, f 2 like this you go on say frequency f 1 they depends on n, the size of n, n is number of frequencies of harmonics. So, you build up your surface elevation from this. So, you add all the surface elevations for all the frequencies, then you get the exact 
nature of the wave surface. So, this is your surface profile. So, your surface profile will not be a harmonic, so it will become something like this. Anyway, so uh, this is your time scale and the vertical axis is your surface elevation. So, this is your surface elevation. Now, the whole thing is called what? This along with this is called, especially this is called one wave record. So, you are analyzing a wave record. So, one wave record has been obtained from so many frequencies, right. So, like this you have to obtain number of records. obtain number of records, then only you will be get you will be getting the probability distribution or rather it is advisable to obtain large number of wave records. Now, if you obtain this large number of now, uh, large uh, in statistics actually they say the large number means number the sample size should be greater than 30. So, this n actually this large means you go greater than 30. So, then the error in these samples will be less otherwise it will be more. Now, what you do? You plot your probability distance distribution for different frequencies. You make a frequency diagram like this. Say this is for a particular frequency f 1. Now, this you have obtained from large number of wave records. So, all wave records, one wave record will give you one surface resolution, other will give you other. So, for the same frequency in each record, you will get this kind of probability density function for the amplitude. Say this is your amplitude A1, and you will get a this is called a probability density function, this is called P of a 1 and this will follow a Rayleigh distribution. So, something like this you will get. Now, what is the essence of this distribution? How do you calculate the probability? Do you know how to calculate probability from a probability density function? So, P A 1 is called a probability density function. Probability density function of A 1 and this subscript 1 denotes it is for the particular frequency f 1. So, what is going what is the value of the area under this curve. Say you are required to calculate, I tell you how to tell me what is the area under this curve. So, I think you should have done some simple statistics. Now, the probability of say if you want to calculate the probability from this diagram, say there are two values of a 1, say this is one, uh, say this, this is one value and this is two value, 
if I tell you to calculate the probability that A 1 will lie between 1 and 2. So, that will be given by the shaded portion that is this hashed portion between 1 and 2. Similarly, that means the probability of A lying between 0 and say a uh, point which is here, this is asymptotic, the total probability always will be 1. So, that is a, a sure event, probability can never exceed value 1, is not it? So, that you should remember, so the total area under this curve will always be 1 and probability that the amplitude, the, now these a, A's are the amplitude of the harmonics, remember that. So, lying between 1 and 2 will be the shaded area between 1 and 2 given by the probability density function. So, this is the thing that you have to plot. The other probability that is of interest is the phase angle. Now, phase angle is given by a uniform distribution. So, this is your phase angle probability distribution for phase angle. So, that is given by alpha 1. Uh, here actually in this equation I told you uh, what was the, this this alpha 1, this is your phase angle. Phase angle of what? Phase angle of these harmonics, not phase angle of the elevation. So, uh, uh, what we are discussing is the probability density function for this A and alpha 1 and this F 1 is what? F 1 has already been given as F 1 if you want to calculate you this is the frequency and how do you get the frequency? Say f i is equals to i divided by d. i is, so you from this diagram you can see, this, so that is one cycle, this is one cycle is not it. So, one cycle then you take the time duration, duration of time is this one, d, say 15 or 20 minutes. So, the frequency is 1 divided by 15 or 1 cycle in 15 minutes. So, the first frequency you can say this is 1, 1 by 15 like this and if you have say number of cycles out here you say how many 1, 2. So, this will be 2, the duration of time is the same. So, this frequency for this harmonic is say this one is 1 by 15, this one is 2 by 15 like this you go on. So, you calculate the frequencies in this manner, right. So, now here, but the other point that we are discussing is this alpha, alpha i, these are the your phase angles for the harmonics. Now, phase angles we are taking as uniform distribution. So, in my previous class, I told you, you take the phase angle to be uniformly distributed. If you take a uniform distribution, then the height of that distribution will be 1 by 2 pi. So, what is the meaning of this? So, this will give us p alpha 1 forward. So, this varies from 0 to 2 pi and height will obviously be 1 over 2 pi. So, why? Because of the, then what will the area of this diagram? Then only you will get 1. So, the total area under this diagram has to be 1. I told you total area under a probability distribution function should always be 1. So, that means your angle or your phase angle has definitely will lie between 0 and 2 pi. So, obviously, any angle will lie between 0 and 2 pi. So, that is what this diagram is saying. Now, you make a, a frequency plot like this. Now, this is related to one particular frequency. Now, here actually what will be different? Now, for all these frequencies, you will find the probability distribution of the phase angle to be the same. But what will be different is the amplitude. So, the amplitude is our main interest in our wave spectra. 
So, you plot arrow frequency plot you take say this this will be for so this will be for frequency say write f 2. Now, here also the same distribution will get. Now, the name of this distribution is a this is called uniform distribution. Now, you always take in the number of frequencies to be greater than 30. You can take less than 30, but uh, the uh, there will be errors in your sample. So, this will be alpha 1 or alpha 2, this has to be alpha 2. So, this will be p of alpha 2 and this again will vary from 0 to 2 pi. So, actually this distribution will be same for all the cases. Now, the only problem is with the amplitude which is going to be different. So, here actually you plot this is your A 2, but you will find that most of these amplitudes they are following a particular distribution and that distribution you can call this as a Rayleigh distribution. So, this is called a Rayleigh distribution. Now, uh, later on we will uh, we'll discuss that even this amplitude is also not sufficient for our data. Now, here actually this is also a Rayleigh distribution. This is also Rayleigh distribution, but with different mean this is your mean, this is your mean value, mu 1 is a mean. Yeah, here you will get another mean, say mu 2. Now, mu 1 is different from mu 2, it can be greater than or it can be less than. So, that, uh, that you did not bother but you keep on plotting. Now, this you keep on you have to make large number of records. Say this is you plot for say this is you make another plot. I am not drawing any more diagrams here. Say this is F 3 like this you go on. Now, after you have done this there is a another exercise that is to be done. So, you have to plot what is called a amplitude spectrum from this what I have shown, shown I have shown only 4 frequencies, but actually there will be more than say 30, it can be 100 also. Now, from this values you build, build up what is called a amplitude spectrum. So, you can see the you know, we have to do lot of studies from waves if you want to get the spectrum. So, this is called a amplitude spectrum. Now, what is this spectrum? So, this is nothing but you plot the mean values that you obtain from this f 1, f 2, f 3, f 4 plot. These mean values are mu 1, mu 2 from here you will get another mean value say mu 3, say mu 4. Now, these you plot that is the mean values of your amplitude for the different frequencies. Now, there is another term for mu. say this you will get. So, you will get 
for discrete frequencies say this is one value then you will get another value then you will get another value so like this you have to make a plot now the wonder is that you will find that all these distributions are mostly they are what is called log normal in character or extreme values. So, in wave mechanics and oceanography, if you want to study or go deeper into this subject, then you have to know what is called extreme value statistics. So, here it will come down. Now, again, you may have another value like this. So, let us suppose this is called the tail. Now, you are getting only discrete values, so these are discrete points. Now, what you have plotted is for different frequencies. So, your horizontal axis is your frequency axis. So, these are F i further and these particulars are F 1, F 2, say F 4 like this you have plotted, like this F n. So, you are plotting these mu, mu values. Now, here mu instead of writing mu, you write these as expected value. Now, mu of what? Expected value of? these a i or random values of a i. So, mu 1 is a expected value. Now, expected value I am writing like this. The underscore signifies that it is a random parameter. Otherwise, so mu 1 is greater a you always remember mean is your expected value. Expected value in statistics we will say is the mean. So, mu 2 will be expected value of A 2. So, like this you go on. So, from these plots you can make a amplitude spectrum, but your amplitude spectrum is discrete you can see that you have plotted for discrete frequencies. Now, um, we are not bothered about the uh, phase angle. Why? Because phase angle is uniformly distributed. We are more bothered about what is called the amplitude spectrum and this P is given the probability density function for A i is given by a Rayleigh function or Rayleigh distribution. <coughs> so, this is pi by 2 e i over. Now, that is why this mu i according to your various values of mu i, your shape of the Rayleigh curve is going to change. There is a change in shape. Yeah, of course, in my <laughs> this the shape is looks more or less same, but it is different. This can be sharper or this can be flatter according to the this value you choose. So this actually it says that it depends on a single parameter mu i. So exponential is e d raised to the power minus pi by four this is a i square over mu i square. Now, this you look up any statistics book you will get. This is for a i obviously amplitude is greater than 0. So, this is probability distribution of amplitudes.
So, this expression has come, this is all these are statistics obtained, obtained from large number of the sample statistics of the surface elevations. So, that is why you, you have to make original these plots from the Fourier function, you, you split up your waves and from there you collect the statistics. So, the probability density function that we are discussing, now you one thing you remember, these are called, these, these Rayleigh distribution is also called a frequency distribution or if you uh, uh, make a distribution of any parameter, I mean the uh, P, P A's are nothing but the number of times that this A 1 occurs uh, at a say period uh, during a class interval. So, these are obtained from histograms. So, in statistics if you go, so all these frequency probability density functions are actually obtained from probability density since uh, you do not you have asked that question. You remember that probability density functions are always obtained, are always obtained from histograms, from histograms. And histograms from how did you obtain this? These are obtained from sample data. Anyway, so this is uh, from wave records and all these things we have come, we are not much bothered about this. So, right now what you bother about is the expression for this. This is called a Rayleigh distribution. Correct. Now, this is uh, one important uh, distribution we have got. Now, this Rayleigh distribution what we have got is for the amplitude. Now, you can also go the reverse way. You can calculate, I am not showing here, you can go back from this say you can use the amplitude spectrum to construct surface elevation. Say use amplitude spectrum use amplitude spectrum to construct surface elevations. You can go the reverse direction. Surface elevation using what? Using the probability density functions. using the probability density functions of AI and alpha i. Oh, but it, you, you will get how many surface elevation? So, from, uh, from this uh, say amplitude spectrum say for one particular frequency. Now, remember what was your equation that we started with? Our equation was basically for surface elevation was this one, the Fourier series. Now, here if you want to construct eta i, you have to know a i, f i and alpha i, these three parameters. Now, from here, what do you do? If you want to construct the this eta, so what do you do? For one particular frequency, you read off this e i value. For <coughs> Now, E i you go back, now this E i is your mean value, E i is your, the expected value is your mean value. 
Now, according to your values of here, you refer to either this diagram or this diagram or this diagram, say F4. F4 frequency will construct, say, you get the particular value of, say, E4 out here. Okay. Now, do not mix up, you go from, say, this and go any random, but you have to be because this actually tells us about the particular Rayleigh distribution. And now, once you enter this diagram, then it is okay. Now, from this diagram, you read off any A value and read off, you lift it off vertically, you read any alpha i. That is why it is called a random distribution. So, for one particular frequency, so for one particular frequency, we are getting from this direction, what you are getting? You are getting a, uh, this a i and alpha i. So, that means for i equal to 1, one frequency, you are getting one value, right? So, now you build this your eta from all these frequencies and then you add, so you get one surface elevation. So, but you can see from all these records that is from one value from the probability distribution diagram for every value from these plots, you will get one elevation. So, how many elevations can you get from the frequency plot? or from the probability distribution one, you can get large number of eta values, as many as you like. So, literally you write hypothetically, because your frequency distributions that you have plotted, these are continuous, you have not, they are not discrete values, but they are this is a con continuous distribution you have obtained. So, from hypothetically you write, you can obtain possible to create a very large set, large set of C surface realizations. And this large set, this is called, this is called an ensemble, this is called an ensemble. So, this you remember, uh, later on we will come across this, what is meant by an ensemble average later on. So, these are, uh, these are all statistics when you are coming into the picture. So, right now, I just told you how to obtain these surface elevations from the probability density function. So, these are called the frequency plots. So, there you plot the n number of frequencies, you get the surface elevation. So, actually you are back calculating. Now, so far so good. Now, what is more important rather than the amplitude, what we want is the variance density spectrum. Now, why I have told you last class? There is another spectrum which is called the variance density spectrum. Now, the amplitude is not of that much significance as your half a square or the amplitude square. Why? Because this tells us the energy in the waves. Energy in the waves or energy density. So, your spectra that you are constructing should give some physical meaning 
it should have some physical meaning. So, normally when we talk about spectra, spectra that means we are actually talking about energy density or the energy spectra. energy density for a certain frequency range. Now, this in vibration also you come across this frequency range. Normally, you will find the earthquake current all are described in terms of a spectra. So, that means, they all speak of a certain energy density for frequencies, number of frequencies. So, and as an engineer, we want to know how much is the energy coming from the excitation. Wave is nothing but an excitation, is not it? Earthquake is nothing but an excitation force, similarly current. So, how much energy we are getting from this, based on that we have to design the structure. So, that is given by this a square or amplitude square. Now, amplitude square by itself is uh, does not carry so much of importance as this value. As you divide this by your the frequency or frequency range. So, this is called a density spectrum. E f i is called a density spectra. If you divide by the frequency interval that is delta f i. Now, what is this E? E is your the mean value. This is half a i square. Uh, underscore means it is a random value. Now, this you have not plotted, is not it? So, what you have plotted in from this other diagram that we have just now shown is only the amplitude. Now, similar plot you have to make for a i square. You will make it for a i square. And after you have done this, you divide by your delta f i. So, you will get plot like this from amplitude spectra. So, this is your amplitude spectra that you have got. Now, those are all discrete values. Say It is normally all these values they follow the extremal distribution. So, we have made a discrete plot. So, this is what is called amplitude spectra. Or rather you write amplitude spectrum. Now, this is given by, uh, sorry actually I should have made an axis, now your axis is somewhere here, say let us write this as E, E is your mean or expected value. Now, here one thing you should note that your horizontal axis, I should have drawn the diagram above this. So, you write this as uh, f i and this is your delta f i. Oh, so, this is your, you have since you have plotted a i values. So, these are the amplitudes of the harmonics, you get an amplitude spectra. And now, what you do? you plot amplitude square. So, you make another plot.
So amplitude modulus is linear, isn't it? So now you are going to this plot. Now still we are getting discrete values of fi. You are still making a discrete plot. Remember that. But this the, uh, the plot will be somewhat different from your amplitude. And something you will get. So, uh, what are the what is the vertical axis? So, expected value of. I said these are all random values. You make an underscore. So, these are half. A i square value. Expected value is the mean value. So, again what is this? This is delta f i. Now, you will see these two plots. Actually, this uh, diagram should be like this. So, these are discrete frequencies you have plotted. So, you write discrete, this is also discrete. Now, from the discrete values, we have to go to continuous values. So, now what you do? You divide it by, you make another plot. Now, the reason we are going from discrete values of frequency to a continuous spectra is that the C does not distinguish between frequencies. This thing you should know that C does not distinguish frequencies. at the wave, you will find n number of frequencies or innumerable frequencies. You do not get a specific <coughs> frequency like this one or this one, you get, you do not get, but there will be a continuous distribution of frequencies. So, that is why we should try to get rid of this. Then how we are going to, the, from the discrete frequencies, we should come to the continuous frequency range. So, that is normally done like this. Now, this delta f i you plot as a histogram, you get a histo histogram plot. histogram you know that these values are called the class intervals that is but still we are getting a plot like this so you look up any statistics book and see how you get a histogram, from that you make your frequency plot. So, these are called class intervals and still this is your f i axis. So, this is called delta f i, but what is your vertical axis? Now, vertical axis, the previous diagram we have plotted 
if you can see that was e half a i square. Now, you divide this by delta f i. So, e is your expected value. So, this is half a i again random this you write 1 over delta f i. So, we are then you will get the variance density spectrum. But we have got variance density spectrum for discontinuous frequencies. Now you reduce these delta f i values. Now, here you will get a continuous spectrum become something like this. So, f you no need to write i, you write f. Now, this you will get E f. So, E f will be in the limit delta f tends to 0. So, this delta f you reduce bring it closer to 0 or some very small value and this is your 1 by delta f. This will be your expected value of half a square. Now, this is called a variance density spectrum. Variance density spectrum, but continuous. Now, next class we will discuss this variance density spectrum. So, variance density spectrum. is the single most important factor is the single most important factor or most right most important concept So, this is how we obtain the C spectra. So, next, next class we will see how what is this C spectra.